Hi everybody, Dan Oman, Mike Bureau, the DRF race of the day for Thursday, August the 11th, race number nine at Saratoga. It's the $150,000 Galway Stakes. Three-year-old Philly is going five and a half furlongs on the Melon Turf course. Want to view free formulator pass performances for this race? Head to the race of the day page at drf.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel and bet this card with DRF Bets. Let's take a look at this field. Please scan the QR code for Race of the Day access on your mobile devices. It's a wide open turf sprint, 10 in the body of the race. The 11 Freedom Speaks is an also eligible. The 12 Mystic Eyes is main track only. We're going to find out how good perhaps the 7 Empress Tigress is. From two starts, she looks very good. Yeah, she does. Um, she's, you know, the morning line favorite. I do think she's the horse to beat as well, Dan. She's run only run twice. They're both pretty fast races, both impressive performances. Um, you know, she's sort of, you know, there are some new faces in here, but she just beat several of these horses in the Coronation Cup earlier in the meet. Several of these horses have speed, obviously, in a turf sprint. One of them, of course, is Empress Tigress. We'll take a look at the pace projector from Timeform US. And Empress Tigress's uncoupled stablemate, the three, Ben Bang, also brings a lot of speed to the party. If Ben Bang runs in this race, uh, she should show a good early speed. Uh, Jonathan Thomas hinted to Dave Grenning in his DRF advance for this race that he's likely to run only one of the two, and it will likely depend on course condition. We are expecting a little rain. Yeah, we'll see which one of them uh, shows up. Um, I suppose the pace projector is probably right um, if if Ben Bang is the horse that shows up because she does kind of feels like a, a one-way speed kind of horse then and she comes off of an effort at Monmouth back on turf um, where she wired the blue sparkler. Bill Mott looks like he has the number one poppy flower, a horse that's near the back of the pack in this pace projector. Looks like he's figured her out and he's gotten her in very good form. I like the way she won the Stormy Blues two starts back. It was a really nice trip and ride from Victor Carrasco that day. We made all the right moves, just moving in and out from the back of the pack. Last time I needed her in the Coronation Cup when she was beaten by Empress Tigress, she kind of got pinched a little bit early, came with a wide run. She was running on at the end of that race. Really for her, it's all about can she get the right race flow and can she get the right trip? Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I liked her her effort at Laurel two starts back, um, and I thought she ran really well the Coronation Cup last time. I mean, it, it's hard to say that she was going to beat Empress Tigress, um, especially when she wound up last early in the race. But man, did Jose Ortiz wait a long time to get this horse going out into the clear in the stretch, and she came with a good run. Um, she just really had too much to do in that race, Dan. She's clearly better as a three-year-old than she was at two. The number two, Delmona, has run well in all three sprint starts in North America. The only off-the-board finish came in the Senorita back in May. She's getting blinkers for the first time, but she's no stranger to headwear. When she was second at Twilight Gleaming in France last year, she wore cheek pieces. She took the race to that speedy Wesley Ward trainee, and she fought hard all the way down to the line. And last time out, kind of in and among horses on the backstretch, got to the outside, yeah. just couldn't get to Ben Bang. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I feel like there's a way you could maybe mitigate that performance a little bit. I still didn't think she ran that well, Dan. And, I, you know, overall, I just don't know how much I care for the Blue Sparkler as a race. I mean, I guess we'll see how it plays out going forward. I liked this Phillies form overseas. I haven't liked it as much that she's gotten over here. Ben Bang has won her last two races, including the Blue Sparkler. And that's a race that we're going to take a look at right now. Ben Bang went right to the front in that race, cleared off, turned for home. We see Delmona on the far outside uh, going to make a run at her. We'll get into second, but just flattens out. Ben Bang finds another gear and sprints on home. Certainly the best buyer speed figure of her career in 86. And I think she's found out what she wants to do, and that's show speed in these turf sprints. It's a big step up in class, and it's Manny Franco's second call. His first call is the also eligible freedom speaks yeah i, I mean i guess ben Bang's a, a, a real wild card in here again i you know i can't say that i loved the race that she's coming out of but she's it's certainly the best race she's ever run dan and it's also only the second turf star for her um and so it's hard to really you know be too hard on her for what she's done so far because at the end of the day she just might be a turf sprinter um this is what she wants to do she's going to be speed in this race from the inside um i suppose she's dangerous i just didn't love her 
The four have a good day brings some international intrigue to the Galway. She has competed primarily in France, exclusively in France for her prior trainer. She's going to be racing first off of a lengthy layoff. She faced a very good field last time out in a group two. The winner of that race came over here, was second stretching out in the Breeders' Cup juvenile turf, and then came back to win her seasonal debut in a group three in France. Uh, have a good day ran really well that day. Took a clear lead inside the eighth pole and just got run down late. Yeah, I mean, she she did run pretty well in that race. She got, she got a really good trip. It wasn't a big field. Um, and, you know, her MO over there anyway had been to go forward in her races. She was always racing right up with the pace, and that's the trip she got last time. They were giving her a little class relief there. I thought she ran well um, without an excuse, although, as you mentioned, the horse that ran her down is pretty good. Um, I liked her form over there. I just don't know that I wanted her coming over here as a speed horse and trying to go with some of these horses early. I'm not sure how that's going to work out especially off a lengthy layoff, but she was a group winner over there last year. She wouldn't mind at all, I would think, uh, a give in the ground. Five is half is enough, going out for Michael Trombetta, trying turf for the first time. There's some turf here. I don't love the frost is on the grass. The dam's a half to current, a graded stakes winner on the turf. Again, the third dam flute won the Alabama and the Kentucky Oaks. There's a little bit of turf in this pedigree, and this filly's done some good work on dirt. Yeah, I mean, I like her dirt form quite a bit. I actually feel like this filly has a lot of talent. Um, I didn't, you know, love the idea of seeing her turn up here uh, to try turf for the first time. You know, she's not the kind of horse that I would want to be betting in this race just because she's really not bred to be better on turf than she is on dirt. Um, but I think she is a good dirt horse. Breeze Easy, the number six, ran well off a lengthy layoff, going seven-eighths of a mile in her North American debut. And last time out in the wild applause, maybe she found the mile a little bit too far, and maybe these tactics a bit too aggressive. Let's watch her performance in the wild applause. It's going a mile. She made the lead in this race. It was a legitimate pace. She just didn't have much left in the tank at about mid-stretch. Yeah, she didn't. And, you know, the two horses that are going to run past her are the two Jab Chad Brown fillers on the outside. They're both pretty good. Uh, but this is really no contest here. Breeze Easy really doesn't have any fight for these two fillies when they come for her. She's going to finish a, a pretty clear third. Okay, performance. I sort of felt similarly about the Soaring Softly, Dan. Um, she ran fine in there, only beating a neck. You know, I wasn't blown away with her performance in that race. But maybe she's another one. Maybe just going shorter is what she wants to do. I'm expecting rating tactics as she cut substantially back in distance. The winner of that last race came back, just missed in the Lake George with an 85 buyer. Empress Tigress, two starts, two wins for Jonathan Thomas. Showed big speed in the turf debut, the Coronation Cup. We'll watch that race earlier in the Saratoga meet. Drew the far outside post, got right up close to the pace, takes the lead. I love the acceleration at about the 316th pole and where she puts the other pace horses to bed. You see Poppy Flower on the outside trying to overcome that slow start in the wide a bit on the turn. Uh, Empress Tiger is very game as well in the stretch, but that was a really striking burst to me that she showed. Yeah, I agree with that. And the other, the other um, thing about that you have to like about the, for, the performance, Dan, is as you said, she showed really good speed early in that race just to get into position. It didn't look like Johnny wanted the lead with her, but he wanted her to get right up close to the pace. Then she got there, and then, as you said, uh, when he needed her to accelerate one more time in the stretch, she did it. She was really impressive last time. She was really impressive breaking her maiden. I think she's the horse to beat right back. She beat four of these foes in the Coronation Cup, and she's run as advertised. She sold for $410,000 as a two-year-old in training. Uh, Jonathan Thomas took his time with her, and it looks like it's reaping rewards. The eight is making my move, and even though making my move is won her last two starts, I believe she's on the underrated side for trainer John Kimmel. She's a New York bred that'll be stepping back up into the open ranks. She looked good winning a second-level state bred along with over course and distance on July 22nd. Nice trip and ride from Arad here. Saved ground early in the pocket. Got to the out outside but when produced i thought one pretty comfortably i did too uh, this is a good performance she did get a really nice trip in here i think the most surprising thing about this race dan is that she wasn't the favorite somehow in here uh, but she won like the favorite here this is a, a convincing win um her race two back when they went seven on turf there she just got absolutely loose on a, on a slow pace that day but she still ran well um I, I agree with you she might be underrated this is a tough spot for her though she's gonna have to improve to beat this field one of the horses that chased Empress Tigress is the nine, Artos. And I thought Artos ran well three back against Twilight Gleaming. Didn't break very well. Julian Lepro sent her up to battle with Twilight Gleaming early. And she was pretty game in between horses. I thought she was okay at Laurel two starts back. And last time out in the Carnation Cup, up close to the pace, bounced around a bit. Wish she ran a little better. Yeah.
Yeah, she didn't have a big finish um, after she got out of the clear. You're, there is a point, though, in the stretch, though, if you want to, you know, give her an excuse in there, a 10 to 1. I mean, she was down on the inside and she really did have to bump her way out. There was a horse to her outside sort of trying to keep her locked in there. Uh, she bumped her way out and then she just didn't really finish that hard. Friends, go back into the free formulator past performances that accompany Race of the Day, and you can click on the short comment to watch the video replays. Derry Main, the number 10, is going to get a lot of attention in this race because of the trip she got last time out, and she was 3-1 to one against Empress Tigers, and she kind of got bottled up in between horses, and she ran on for third, and I think she will attract a lot of attention off that race with Rosario retaining the mount. I just wish she ran better in her previous races. Yeah, I didn't like her uh, race at Laurel two starts back. And I get that um, there was a point in the upper stretch there in the Coronation Cup. But Rosario looked like he wanted to come through between. And he really didn't have the room to do it. So he lost a spot. And then by the time he got outside, it was probably too late. I still didn't think she ran great, though, Dan. To me, she was really good as a two-year-old. I don't think she's improved that much so far as a three-year-old. And she just really hasn't been as sharp as she was. I don't know. I still like her as a horse. I still think she's good. I just don't like her last two races. And I don't want her if she gets bet in here. Mr. Guys, the 12 is in her main track only. Interesting that it would be her dirt debut. The 11, Freedom Speaks, is the also eligible. Interesting that it's Manny Franco's first call. She'll try turf for the first time as a half to two turf winners. And I think she contends if she gets into this race. Uh, before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for all the latest year of TV video offerings, Saratoga, Del Mar, and lots, lots more. Top pick time for Thursday's race of the day, the Galway. Mike Empress Tigress has just looked very, very good and should get a good trip. Yeah, I mean, she's got the speed to just put herself where she needs to be. Um, I really just can't knock either of her two performances, Dan. And I feel like if she comes back here and runs as well as she did in the Coronation Cup, she might just win right back. If Ben Bang doesn't run, I'm with you. I'm going with Empress Tigress, my second pick. Uh, if Empress Tigress doesn't run, I think Ben Bang has a chance. She's really a nice price on the morning line. She looked good winning at Monmouth last time, uh, utilizing that speed. And I think that she's just going to you know, try to show them her heels from the start of this race at a decent price. 7146 for Mike, 3721 for me. The Thursday race of the day, the Galway at the Spa.